Hello and welcome everybody. This is the introduction to the rendering course in the year 2021 at the TU Wien. So first off, we want to give you a little taste of what this lecture will be about and also why you should actually put some effort into learning the things that we will be talking about in the upcoming lectures. Understanding the mathematical foundations and underlying principles of rendering enables us to generate realistic looking images of highly complex input scenes. And there are many ways to achieve that, but in this course, our method of choice and the general topic will be the method of path tracing. Therefore, the first entry in our category, Heroes of Rendering, Today is Jim Kajia. Jim Kajia is the inventor of the rendering equation and as a side product also of the path tracing algorithm, which followed directly from his scientific paper, which was simply called the rendering equation. The paper has been cited over 3,500 times up until now. He got his PhD at the University of Utah, which has a long history in computer graphics and was a professor at the famous Caltech, the California Institute of Technology. Currently, Jim is with Microsoft. So what is path tracing? We can define it by building on something that you most certainly already heard of, which is ray tracing. In ray tracing, we shoot rays through pixels into the scene and if we hit an object, we calculate some approximation of the light it reflects and set a color value in each pixel. If we keep following the ray over multiple bounces, we can get effects like shiny reflections, which are always nice. But ray tracing on its own usually has no claim to authenticity because it is often not physically correct. For that, we need to consult ray tracing's big brother, path tracing. Path tracing actually includes considerations of physical behavior of light, and as a result, there is a substantial amount of math involved to get it going. But once you do, you will find that complex physically based effects like caustics or soft shadows just fall out of it as a side product. In this lecture, we will give you the background and tools for developing an unbiased path tracer. You may not know what this means yet, but you will soon learn what that is and why it's a good thing. And path tracing or ray tracing or similar variants are pretty much ubiquitous now. Almost any animated movie that is being released these days features some sort of path tracing or ray tracing for special effects. And the range of applications that can exploit ray tracing and make use of it has even increased further as of late. There is now a collective effort to bring ray tracing to commodity hardware. And one example of that would be the Turing architecture by NVIDIA, which has dedicated hardware modules that allow to speed up and accelerate ray traversal and ray tracing of scenes in general. So the goals of this lecture would be to convey how these methods work and also, as we already mentioned, give you an understanding of the fundamental underlying principles. And an important aspect of that would be to understand the nature of light and color, what these actually mean in the context of rendering and also in physical terms, modeling light transport for image synthesis from an input 3D geometry scene, and the generation of realistic or artistic high quality images from a given input. And last but not least, making the rendering process effective is a very important part, uh, especially for path tracing, because if you don't take care of that, it will take you a long time to generate any output at all. There are some prerequisites that we expect from you in order to complete this course. And the first and more important one would be a general interest in computer graphics. The second would be basic programming skills, particularly in C++, because we will be using code snippets throughout the slides and there will be a practical lab exercise as well. 
We also expect you to have a firm understanding of the fundamentals of higher mathematics, including interpreting moderately complex formulas, applying and understanding the concepts of linear algebra, probability and statistics essentials, and also some calculus, particularly integrals and derivatives will be used heavily. And if you need a recap or introduction to any of these mathematical foundations, you can still do that now before starting off with the lecture. Um, what should help should be the early chapters of the recommended course book. Or if you need a more didactic approach and something that is more visual, you might consider checking out 3Blue, 1Brown as a series on linear algebra and calculus. The lecture will be held by Adam Celarek and me, Bernhard Kerbel, and the expected time for you to be available in order to ask questions would be Wednesday, 4 p.m., unless otherwise announced. And this time slot also includes the chance for making announcements and updates regarding the practical part of the lecture. The practical part, the lab exercises, consist of four programming exercises which are based on the Noring renderer. The framework can be downloaded via Git and also submissions will be made via our dedicated submission Git. Each of these exercises must be solved individually. There is no group work involved. There will also be a final exam towards the end of the semester. Here's a short overview of the stages that we will be going through in this lecture. You will learn about the nature of light and some intricate math, followed by the rendering equation itself, the path tracing algorithm, and then some more math in order to develop the necessary background for making great looking renderings. After that, it will be all about speed to bring the render times down, because path tracing is not cheap. We will look at essential ways of making that happen without sacrificing the fidelity of our output images. Finally, we will look at what we can do in order to make our renderings really impressive by introducing physically based materials and how light interacts with them. If you want to succeed in this course, there are two paths to victory. One would be the efficient way where you do only the minimum required work and just accept the formulas that we give you and implement them in the assignments. If you do that, you will also have to study well for the final exam, but you might be done rather quickly with the contents of this course. However, the effective way where you actually establish long-term understanding of what rendering is all about would be to prod at the formulas that we give you follow the derivations that we provide to arrive at the results that we need, and also implement several bonus tasks in each assignment. If you do all these, you can probably accumulate enough points to even skip the exam. So in order to get a passing grade in this course, there are several factors that go into that. The most important one would be to do the lab exercises and you can earn up to 100 points if you follow the instructions and requirements in the assignment sheets. But you can also add to that extra points that you will obtain for putting in additional effort and excellent solutions may actually earn you enough points to skip the final exam completely. And this should be an incentive for you to go out and try some of the advanced techniques that we will present in the course of this lecture yourself, even if it isn't strictly required in the assignment sheets. And the second most important part would be to study for the final exam. The questions will, of course, be based on the topics that we talk about in this lecture. And as we already mentioned, the final exam will be held towards the end of the lecture course. In terms of how contents and information will be communicated in this course, the lecture slides will be made available online on the course homepage. For official announcements, we will be using TISS and group mail. For discussion topics of the lecture contents, we recommend that you actually use the 2 platform. 
If you find any mistakes, issues, or there are special actions required for you, for instance, any issues with your GitLab account or similar, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us via direct mail. For submissions and testing, we use a GitLab that is hosted on the link given on the bottom of this slide. Regarding what you should and should not communicate, here are some examples of good and bad ideas. For instance, it is encouraged to talk about the lecture contents with us or your colleagues. Also, it is highly encouraged to ask general questions on Tuvel, as well as writing us mails if you find any mistakes or errors in the course material so that we can provide updates. In special cases, it is also okay for you to send us your code, but only if you don't find any other means of getting to the bottom of an error that you keep seeing. Uh, for examples of bad ideas, it is not encouraged to send us mails before you have checked all the other available course materials. For instance, the relevant lecture slides or ongoing Tuvel discussions. Uh, also, it is a very bad idea to actually share your code with your colleagues, because if we find that there are similarities within the submissions between two or more people, we will do very detailed plagiarism checks towards the end of the semester to make sure that code is not simply copied between participants. And of course, this also goes for posting code on Tuvel, because by doing that, you are basically implicitly uh, encouraging plagiarism in the course. If you need to contact us personally, please do not hesitate to do so by using the mail addresses given on this slide. Apart from Adam and me, this year we will also be joined by our tutor Hamid, who will be in charge of preparing the lab exercises and making sure everything runs smoothly with the submissions. So you may contact him first if you have questions regarding the lab. There is a recommended lecture book. It's called Physically Based Rendering 3rd Edition. And if you cannot afford to add that one to your own private library, there's also an electronic version of the book available at the book's homepage, which contains most of the important contents that we will talk about in this lecture. And of course, there's also the course page, which is available under the link provided below. There are the Tuvel and TASS course pages as well, and the lecture slides, which we will be uploading to the course homepage. The assignment sheets will be released in the course of the semester online as well. And for an announcement, this year the Eurographics conference will be taking place in Vienna. And Eurographics is one of the most renowned computer graphics conferences. You can now apply as a student volunteer. And working as a student volunteer includes work in preparation for the actual conference, management and organization during the conference. And as a reward, you get to participate and meet some of the most important fellows in the field of computer graphics, exchange ideas, look for advice, or just get an impression of cutting edge development. So if you feel like this is something you would be interested in, please shoot us a mail and we will set you up with the organization committee.